Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So yes, my hair is totally wet, but let's not get distracted by that. If you're new to this channel, then hi, my name is Laura. I'm a 21 year old small town girl from Germany studying abroad in Scotland. And this channel is all about my life as an international student. So this video is another day in the life of studying abroad in Scotland. And I'm so excited to be bringing you this video because this is a collaboration with Deutschland.de and the German Forum office as part of their Chance Europe campaign which is all about studying abroad in Europe so I'm so excited to be partnering with them on this video so within their campaign this week they will be offering tons and tons of relevant information all about studying abroad in Europe so all about Erasmus studying abroad in Germany international programs to study abroad literally everything that you need to know about studying abroad in Europe so I'm super excited to be part of this campaign and show you guys around my everyday life studying abroad here in Scotland and also in this video I'm gonna answer a few questions actually that I got regarding Brexit because a lot of you guys have messaged me whether Brexit has any consequences for us international students and um, so definitely keep on watching um, if you want to hear about my experience of studying abroad in Scotland now with Brexit so we're gonna talk about that. Okay, so it is now 11 a.m. Let's rewind a bit to some cozy morning vibes. and I've already gotten a head start on my work for today because this week is actually reading week so we don't you know have uni classes but we're supposed to use the time for our project so this week I've been dedicating five hours every single morning like between morning and lunch because that's when I'm the most productive to working on my proposal for my dissertation because I'm a fourth year PR student so I'm currently in the process of writing the proposal for my dissertation which is kind of crazy that I'm like writing my bachelor thesis so yeah I did that already today just um, hopped into the shower I got ready and now I'm here filming for you guys so let's see what today is gonna bring this is literally a realistic typical day in the life I haven't planned any special trips to Scottish castles and epic landscapes although that would be pretty epic but you know uni work's gonna get done as well right <laughs> wow this lighting sorry that the the sun just came in which is actually it doesn't really happen a lot here in Scotland you know with the weather no no it's actually fine so Aberdeen is the third biggest city in Scotland it's not overly huge I will put in the population here because I don't actually know but I have to say that especially like in recent years I feel like Aberdeen has really developed there are quite a few cool things to do in Aberdeen like the Aberdeen Beach is really nice or Seaton Park um, or Marshall College is really pretty the architecture generally Finally, here in Aberdeen is super gray. It's called the Granite City as well. Aberdeen also has tons and tons of really cute coffee shops and restaurants, which I personally love. But yeah, I think I should get in 
one or two more hours of proposal work so I kind of get that done because I do like to do the most important task that needs the most willpower and like the first thing in the morning not procrastinate right so that's what I'm gonna do now <laughs> This is so typical Scotland, sun is shining, but it's already raining again. Can't decide what to have for lunch. Probably gonna make soup. So this is actually like a super Scottish, I think it's Scottish, I don't think it's British, pastry or roll, I really can't describe it, but it's like squishy and it's called a crumpet and it's really 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 good so I'll just have that with my soup, enjoy my lunch break and I'm just finishing Harry Potter and the Hot Blood Crew. Only one hour and 23 minutes left. Potted handkerchief in his hand. I just finished my lunch and I just thought in case you're new to my channel I would touch upon why I actually decided to study abroad and why I am currently here in Scotland. So I always kind of knew that I wanted to do something different than other people and the idea of going abroad has always been really exciting to me. Originally I wanted to do a work and travel in New Zealand after high school and then just go to uni in Germany. However, I wasn't confident enough to do work and travel by myself so I was kind of looking for alternatives. Back then I had this friend who was, was studying abroad in Scotland and I knew that he did but I never really considered it for myself because until then I thought oh wow studying abroad is just you know for other people it's not something that you know an average small town girl can do. Also in my head I always thought studying abroad is so expensive. When I started doing my research I learned that in Scotland actually as an EU student you don't have have to pay tuition fees. Why not? Like why shouldn't I study abroad? So it became this really exciting yet scary thought as well to you know study abroad. Back then I'd never been away from home for longer than like a week and I was really close with my family and we also didn't ever do like crazy trips like just literally we're just like a normal small town family. No one in my friend group or in my school, no one ever did study abroad. I knew no one who did study abroad so it was a really scary thought and honestly what led me to actually applying was that I just wanted to try. It's one of my biggest fears in life is you know regret and looking back and you know wishing oh I wish I would have done that blah blah blah. I applied and I didn't really expect to get in to be honest um, but yeah then I did and that is kind of how everything evolved. You know just taking a chance and seeing and recognizing an opportunity. Really how I ended up here in Scotland, that is my little story. I also made a video really going a lot more in depth on like my personal um, motivations to go abroad. So feel free to check that out if you are interested. I just got ready to head out the door. I actually decided that instead of going to a coffee shop, I will go to my co-working space. I just recently started a part-time job as a marketing assistant for the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Society or group, um, I shall say, um, at my uni and they have a really, really cool co-working space. So I love to go there and get work done there. I also have to do a few things for my business because I have an online business. I do freelance services like video editing, 
editing, podcast editing, all of those fun things. I don't know, I just realized that really if I've never studied abroad, I would have never had all of those incredible opportunities. Like right now, this part-time job is so great because I get to meet so many amazing, you know, like-minded people, fellow entrepreneurs, and get to connect on an international level, which is really what I always wanted. Like I always imagined myself working with international people, you know, with people from all around the world, traveling for work, having international connections. And that is also a big reason why I really decided to study abroad. But really now this has evolved. My clients for my business are from all around the world. I have a network of people from all around the world. You know, when it comes to envisioning my future, um, I think studying abroad has really inspired me as well and showing me that, you know, you can create the lifestyle that you really, really want if you set your mind to it. You know, when you study abroad once, you really kind of catch the travel bug. So I realized that I don't want a typical nine to five just because I really want to travel a lot more and, you know, live in different places, live in different countries. And again, I think studying abroad showed me, you know, what opportunities are out there. Just studying abroad, I just totally fell in love with immersing myself in different cultures because when you live in a country, you experience the culture in such a different way than you would ever as a tourist. So for example, after uni, I really want to go to do my yoga teacher training in India. And that's something that if I would have never studied abroad here in Scotland or went abroad to Canada for my semester abroad, I would have never, like, I would never have the confidence to, you know, go to India. Or I've done so much solo traveling as well. Like just this past summer, I went to a business event in Budapest. For that, when I was in Canada, I flew all the way to San Diego. Hi everyone, and welcome to my San Diego vlog. Pillar beaches in San Diego, like uh, Ocean Beach, Beach, for example, I went to Coronado Beach. Such a beautiful, beautiful place, right? Like the town is really, really cute. By myself also to go to a business conference. And those are all things that if I would tell my 17 year old self, she would be like, Oh yeah, 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 girl, continue dreaming, like continue dreaming. Yeah, studying abroad has made me independent and confident and goal driven, you know, because I've always been a dreamer, but I always felt like my dreams were not for me, they were not possible for me. But studying abroad has proved the opposite because, you know, your dreams are possible if you set your mind to it. So that was my kind of rant right now. It just really inspired me to talk about this. I love talking about those kinds of things. Um, but without further ado, let's be productive. Let's go to the co-work. Let's see how much I can film. Most of the times there aren't that many people there, so I can maybe film. But if there are people there, I always feel a bit weird to film. Um, but yeah, let's, let's go. <laughs> of being alone in the co-work you can blast Christmas music in November. No one is gonna judge. Wow, this lighting is really good right now. <laughs> for once. So I've been getting questions about Brexit and how it affects studying abroad in Scotland um, a lot over the past few weeks. And I totally get that because it's definitely a topic that's of importance. Because we are EU students, right? Because Scotland is part of the EU, SAS, which is the um, student awards agency Scotland, pays our tuition fees. This is really what even enables so many international students to come to Scotland um, because I feel like if you have to pay tuition fees, that makes it just so much harder to study abroad. However, obviously with Brexit, there have been a lot of discussions as well, like how the tuition fee will evolve. Will students from the EU now have to pay? I, you know, haven't studied politics. 
I don't really know that much about it, but I still really want to share with you guys my experience of being an international student here in Scotland right now. And I do highly recommend you guys to keep updated with politics and specifically there is a page on SAS um, which deals with Brexit and which gives you the newest updates regarding Brexit. So I will leave that down below in the description box if you guys want to keep updated with that site. Okay, so Laura asks, how's the general mood in Scotland about this topic? So I am personally not feeling any change at all. I've also never heard anyone say something negative about it and I clearly remember when I first went to study abroad in 2016 when Brexit was I think announced or they were thinking about it I can't remember but I got an email from my uni saying how Scotland really wants to keep their international students and I feel like the mindset in Scotland is a lot more and um, different as well towards Brexit a lot of people don't actually want Brexit and I mean there's this really really cool campaign it's called um, Scotland is open I really really like it they obviously do want to keep their international students because it creates diversity in the country Emanuela asked my concern is that I won't be able to study abroad with the SAS program. You see, I'm training so hard to achieve a good English level and I'm so scared that they may delete free tuition fees for EU students. Website of SAS. On the 19th April 2019, the Scottish government confirmed it would meet the cost of tuition fees for eligible EU students starting their course in 2020-2021 for the duration of their course. So if you are gonna stop, start studying next year in 2020, you are also get fully covered by SAS for your tuition fees. And then on the website it says, we are not in a position to confirm our funding policy for EU nationals and associated groups starting a course of study in academic year 2021-2022, as we're awaiting the outcome of EU exit negotiations between the UK government and the EU. So if you want to start studying not next year, but the year after, they don't know yet if they can cover your fees. So it's really important that you keep updated. Uh, I, of course, totally understand uh, where you're coming from from Freda asked can EU students study in Scotland with Brexit? The only thing that I had to do as an international is the EU settlement scheme. Our like uni sent all of us international students a link for that. And what you basically had to do, you had to like download an app and then you put in like your passport and that was it. Like that was literally the only thing we had to do. So in terms of the EU settlement scheme, again on the website it says, the terms of any EU exit remain unclear. Resident EU citizens have until Le at least the 31st December of 2020 to apply to the EU settlement scheme in the event that the UK leaves the EU without a deal. So that's kind of what I can tell you guys about Brexit. I think that's just something we have to be aware of, we have to keep updated with and just something we have to hope for the best. But I really hope that this kind of helps you with some peace of mind if you had any questions. Again, this is just my personal, you know, experience. If you have any further questions at all, make sure you drop them down below in the comments. <laughs> so I just arrived home from the co-work. It's almost 8 now. I did stay a bit longer than expected, but anyway, I'm gonna make some dinner now and I am continuing to watch this Netflix documentary that I started. It's called Heal. Yeah, after dinner, I am probably also gonna do some yoga just to, you know, wind down. I'm really, really hungry, so I'm gonna make myself some food now. So I made some really, really yummy salad. Um, so I just put salad, beetroot, pear. I can never remember how it's called, pear, pear pear I think. Some tortellini that are filled with I think mushrooms, some pecan nuts, cranberries, balsamic glaze and some vegan cheese. of the dedicate um, 30 day yoga challenge. So since the beginning of October, I have been doing daily yoga again with the help of Yoga with Adrienne. She's my favorite yoga instructor ever. I recommend her in every single video. I never regret turning up on the mat and the, my yoga mat for me is just such a like safe space as well to just, you know, be 
have no responsibility. It's just so such a beautiful practice. So yeah, I'm gonna do day eight now. then right now <laughs> now 9 23 and i think i'm just gonna watch one more episode of grace anatomy maybe and then go to sleep um so thank you so so much for watching this video thank you to deutschland.de for sponsoring this video please don't forget to check out all the information about chance europe this is really such an incredible campaign which i'm so proud and grateful to be part of everything will be linked down below yeah thank you so so much for watching this video and i will see you guys in my next one Bye.